I am very, very, very surprised. This is way faster than advertised, guys, especially the write speed. This write speed is supposed to be 2,000. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobelman. This is a Pan Y brand of M.2 solid state drivers, the latest and the greatest. Everybody wants one of these M.2 drives, especially if you have an old computer. You want this. This is fast. This is the best and the greatest. This is XLR8 Gaming and it's 500 gigabytes and I'll tell you exactly why I have 500 gigabytes. It's because I'm comparing it against another brand that's also 500 gigabytes. There's no reason for that except from the fact that the squeakers demanded that on my previous videos you gotta have the same size drive and compare it with that. It has nothing to do with that. The speed is speed. It doesn't matter how big it is. But I digress. We're going to compare 500 versus 500 of a different brand, which is a Samsung 970 Evo. All right, that out of the way. This one is NVMe PCIe Gen 3 Times 4. What that means, you got to have either M.2 slot that runs over PCI Express, or you got to have a free PCI Express slot on your computer that's at least four times. You can use eight times or 16 times. So yes, if you don't have an M.2 slot on your motherboard, you can still use this with this thing. This is just an adapter. This is a cheap adapter. You can insert it into this, put it on your computer, and there you have it. You have an M.2 drive. I will link it in the description if you're interested. I'm not saying you should necessarily buy the one I'm using, but check them out. There are definitely better ones. This is the one I got is cheap, but it works. We're going to use that as well. All right. This is 3,500 megabits per second read speeds and the write speed is 2000 megabits not megabytes megabits read write speeds i'm sorry compared to 970 evo plus which is 3500 megabits per second read and it's supposed to also be i think 34 also or 3500 write read as well anyways yes this one is definitely going to be slower when it comes to writing but it's also cheaper drive. We're going to test that. So why would you care about write? That's if you're installing something on your computer or copying something over back and forth. You definitely want the write speed. But if you're just worried about load times, this, your games, your operating system, your Windows updates, all of that, you might want to just look at the read speed mostly. And this is why I'm comparing it to 970 EVO Plus because it has similar read speeds. We're going to test that, guys. Very, very important. Let's do a quick unboxing. We're going to get it to the benchmarking. All right. Let's open it real quick just to show you. Then we're going to install it. And then we're going to look at the benchmarks. Like I said, that's the most important thing. I will show you real quick how to install it as well into this adapter. Here it is. It's not rocket science. Let me do a little focus action for you guys. Here we go. The main thing to worry about is the orientation of this notch. This is an M key type of solid state drive. If you get the one that has two notches, that's the wrong one. That's just SATA. All right. So all I did was just kind of bend it here because it's kind of weird packaging, but it holds it in there. All right. Very easy. Here's our adapter. We're just going to put it in there real quick. These adapters usually come with all the right hardware. All you got to do is just make sure it's aligned properly like so let me give you a little close-up action guys you see the notch there's another notch right there there's another notch right there so you just make sure that's aligned put it on the angle like this put it on the angle you see how it kind of stays there like that this is how laptop memory is installed as well so make sure you put it on an angle like this first insert it like that and all we're going to do is just lower it and screw it down Okay, and here we have the little screw action, and we're just going to screw it on there. Ah, guys, I hate these little tiny screws. I'm trying to film this, and I'm standing behind the camera at the same time. Holy moly, guacamole. All right. It's not rocket science, guys. There it is. Just a little tight action, and that's that's it right there. And then, if you get one of the adapters that has a heat sink on there, make sure you put the heat sink on there. This one didn't come with a heat sink. That's what I'm saying. You don't necessarily have to buy this one. I'll link it so you can just check it out. Just check it out. Don't buy it necessarily. You can. I don't care. Um, it's cheap. But see if you can get one that has a heat sink that you put over it. You just kind of insert it over here, 
and then you put the C heat sink on because these things can't get hot. You know, I'm just trying to do you a favor and tell you right away, it gets hot. Alright guys, let's benchmark it. Alright guys, here we are inside of my computer. Uh, let's just see for a reference what kind of processor I have, so make sure that there's no bottleneck going on. Here's my i9-9900K, and uh, let me show you the disk drives. The first one is 970 EVO+. Plus. It shows up like that when you install Samsung drivers, which is normal. But it does say NVMe, so we know it's that one. And then we got PNY, which is the one we just talked about. This is the one we just installed. It's a CS3030. 3030. Uh, if you remember looking at the box, it said 3030. So if you want to confirm that, you can certainly do so. And of course, I have a couple more drives in here, which is just a regular 860 EVO solid state drive and then a regular standard 970 EVO IM.2, which is not the one we're testing. We're going to test the first two here. All right, this is how they look like inside of my computer. This is the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. And here is the one we just installed, PNY. Here it is. Same thing, essentially. Capacity is 465 gigabytes when it comes down to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these folders inside of EVO Plus and I'm going to put them inside PNY. And I'm going to test it with stuff inside of that. You know how many co comments I've seen on my previous videos when I did this type of comparison? When squeakers tell me that I am not doing this right. You can't have anything in there. You can't test the one that has stuff in it because it's slower. Like really? Do you want... Do you calculate the speed of a drive when there is nothing in it? Do you want your drive to be fastest and when there is nothing in it? This is why I'm going to test it with stuff in it. Alright guys, so here we are. We're definitely going to do a crystal disc. We're going to do a benchmark. But I want to show you what I did here as a preparation for a real world example. And the first thing I did was actually make sure I'm recording with the camera outside of the computer. If I use screen recording software, that's actually going to impair the results. Meaning it's going to change things, it's going to slow it down, and they're not going to be accurate results. So I want to make sure that that's not happening. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a quick test of copying to itself. Here's the 970 EVO Plus, we're going to do copy paste. So what it's going to do is going to create same folders and files. We're going to do a side by side. All right. So far, it's it peaked up, and you can see that it slows down whenever it's reading smaller files. Let me just do it right here. It's Whenever it's reading smaller files, it slows down. Again, like I talked about before, and whenever it hits a large file, like these MP4s, it gets up to that speed, but it copies them so quickly that it doesn't even have time to hit ramp up to the speeds. That was very impressive. All right, now let's do the same thing on the PNY. We're going to do a copy paste onto itself again, guys. This is make it a copy onto itself. We're going to do a side by side. It peaked up just like the other one, interestingly enough, and but it slowed down. It's noticeably slower, but the speeds are still pretty good. I mean, considering that the read and or the, the read and write is supposed to be slower. Well, the read is supposed to be the same, I'm sorry, but the write is supposed to be slow. I liked that the consistency here, it's very similar to 970 EVO, also very fast. These numbers are impressive. Okay, so technically speaking, I think, and I'm going to do a side by, again, we looked at the side by side here as well. Look, look, while I'm talking, we're going to do a side by side. And I think 970 EVO noticeably won, but this PNY is actually 20 bucks less, so it's $20 less. Now, if we are going to, if you're going to get a one terabyte or a larger, let's say you get one terabyte, we're talking forty dollars less. So, if you are buying a larger, uh, if you want a larger hard drive storage, then you might want to consider PNY if you want to save money. Forty dollars is quite a bit of money for most people. But if you don't care about that, and you or you're buying a 500 gigabyte, then you might as well get the Samsung 970 Evo, especially for the operating system. Now I want to talk about operating system real quick. If you don't have a built-in M.2 slot, chances are your computer is not going to support it. I will show you on this screen what's required. You got to have NVMe support, and uh, you got to be able to have these specific settings. Generally speaking, you cannot boot 
unless your computer BIOS support it and you, you already have an M.2 built in. Otherwise, if you're putting it as an adapter, it's most likely just going to be as storage, okay? Which is also great for like if you're loading games on it, if you're doing some productivity work, like video editing, some kind of file transfer storage, it's great for that, you know? Operating system, the main benefit from have, for having an M.2 as an operating system is to boot up and how often do you actually boot up the computer and for the updates. But you get similar results with just a regular SSD and I've actually talked about this in my other videos. There's a comparison video that I've done as well if you want to check that out. Alright guys, let's now do the crystal disk. We're going to do, let's see, which is our Evo? E, local disk E. We're going to leave everything at default. I just did a fresh install of Crystal Disk. We're going to leave everything at default. I'm going to run it and I'm going to come back with the results for the 907 EVO Plus, I should say. Not just the regular 9. This is 907 EVO Plus. Because I know it takes a while. I'm just going to come back with the results and so you guys can see them. All right, guys. So the results are coming in. This is for 970 EVO Plus. You can see the numbers right now and that are... 3.5 gigabits per second read or 3,578 megabits per second and then we got the write speed of 3,279 which if I did a test again it would probably on average be 3,300 which is pretty respectful uh, re res respectful respectful I uh, sure why not why the hell not might as well be respectful I respect these speeds guys this is pretty good. It's pretty close to what the advertisement is. These things will fluctuate up and down. I mean, this is just the nature of things. But generally speaking, we got 3.5 gigabits per second, if you will. And then we got 3.3 around it of gigabits per second for the write speed. So these are the numbers for 970 EVO+. Plus. All right, so the other one is letter D for the drive. Here it is, we're going to do the same testing here. I'm gonna come back to you once we are close to finish. All right guys, so the numbers are coming in for the PNY drive. I am very, very, very surprised. This is way faster than advertised, guys, especially the write speed. This write speed is supposed to be 2,000. Look at this. It's 2,434 megabits per second for the writing. Wow, talking about being better than advertised. We got the read speeds of 3.2. It's supposed to be 3,500. Now, let me throw this out there as well. This is using that adapter. Keep in mind, we're using an adapter. From my testing in the past, comparing the one, comparing the numbers used on adapter and on the onboard, on my motherboard, the difference was about 5%. So if you're using this directly into your embedded M.2 slot into your motherboard, you're going to expect, you can expect, I should say, 5% faster than even this. So the reason I'm using an adapter in this case, because not everybody has an M.2 slot on their computer, but now you can. I would be perfectly okay with these numbers if I didn't even have M.2 to begin with, guys. I mean, these are huge, huge numbers. And look at this write speed. This is, I thought it was, honestly, I thought it was going to be even less, considering that it's running off an adapter that you just plug into your PCI, your free PCI Express slot. Oh, my God. I'm impressed, considering, sure, the read numbers are not exactly what they advertise, but then again, we're using an adapter but I'm still happy, let's say they 5%, add 5% on top of that. So what is 5% of 1,000 is 50, and then we got 100, and then around one, around 25. So about 125 added to this, that's going to be close to 3,500 in my opinion. Now imagine if that adds on to this, onto the write speed as well, then we're talking way better than advertised, guys. So yeah, in my opinion... This is a good deal. It was 60, 67 or $65 or something like that for 500 gigabytes of storage of M.2 plus the adapter is like 20 bucks less than that. I mean, if you want to buy a better one, please do get the one with the heatsink. Anyways, I'm going to 
point to the ones that the one I used and the things that I've used in this testing uh, in the description if you want to check it out. Again, don't necessarily buy the adapter that I'm using. You can if you want to, but I don't want to, you know, I can't support these peop these companies, you know. I'm just saying this is what I'm using, you know. So, you be the judge. This is these are the results and you know, hey, th this this is what happens when you spend $20 less. Evo is Evo Plus is definitely faster. But man, these are good numbers. And again, if you buy a terabyte, you're saving 40 bucks at least. At least. All right, guys, I hope you like it. Please click the like button. I really appreciate it. Take care, and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.